through the Cannabis Cup, we kind of built the modern marijuana culture as it exists today, because everybody gathered for the first time in freedom in Amsterdam, and we kept doing that over and over and over again. And while I was doing these, uh, I started out like parties, that's what I thought was a pop party. But then I realized there was something more significant going on with the plant. Because its powers as a medicine are so intense, it carries a very spiritual vibration with it, which is why you see all these cultures uh, you know, wrapping themselves around marijuana as a sacrament. And the thing was, I wanted a uh, ceremony that would include everybody. And there's a lot of different cultures with marijuana, and they all have their own particular dogmas. And I have issues with some of the dogmas. And, uh, but I, I honor and cherish the ceremonies of their ancestors, the poetry, the creation myths, you know, the, uh, we have a ceremonial history that goes back into time, into really ancient times that's been handed down to us, and that's something we want to hold on to because that's what connects us to our ancestors. But at the same time, we want to unify all peoples, all cultures. So I really, I figured out there's really only one rule. Don't hurt anybody. As long as we agree we're not going to hurt anybody, everything else is cool. Now we don't have to fight over the dogmas. You keep your dogma, I'll keep my one rule. Let's get together and hold ceremonies. And the way we do ceremonies is, they're improvisational. We don't want scripts. We want something to manifest straight, pure from the heart. And we want to pass that energy around and share it with each other. So that there's not one person with a big hat trying to run the show. The other thing I want to tell you about spirituality is that the ones that have the big hat on, on the stage directing everybody and everything's scripted out, those are false spiritualities that have been through thousands of years of corruption. There's no way to explain what's going on, the fact that they're, they're used to conduct war. The religions have been perverted to conduct war, and that's not the intention of the people that started those ceremonies. So, in order to, uh, to break this system of war for profit, manipulating religions, we have to try and unify all religions and accept everybody at the ceremony and have ceremonies that are so inclusive that everybody feels like they're connecting to their ancestors. And uh, when we were trying to make up ceremonies, one thing that started happening was we started making up songs about marijuana. And uh, I would make one up just on the spot every year. And I actually collected, after about 30 years of doing the Cannabis Cup, I, I put a bunch of them into a book I call Treasure of the Holy Grail. Because that, uh, at, at the end of the line, what I discovered was the true meaning of the Holy Grail was cannabis and milk mixed together and drunk. They call it Soma in India, Ioma in Persia, and uh, Shuma in uh, China. But this drink became the dominant medicine and recreational substance throughout the world. The whole Silk Road was built by stoners. And uh, they started uh, in teepees breathing the smoke but when they figured out they could mix it with the milk, hot milk, it would activate the, the, uh, the, you know, the primary ingredients to the point where the medicine was way stronger and you could heal glaucoma with uh, this thing. So they, the Holy Grail was what we, it was the substance that was in the Grail. It wasn't about the golden cup, but you'll find those golden cups buried all over the Silk Road. From two, three thousand years ago, all the Kurgans that are still around, you'll find a golden ceremonial cup. And that was picked up by the Zoroastrians who gave it to the Christians. The Eucharist originally started out, you were drinking uh, milk and cannabis, and sometimes they actually put the cinnamon, and sometimes opium, and sometimes ephedra. You know, it's 
we're not that much different today from what we were doing 2,000 years ago. It's just that they've created all these synthetic single molecule substances to take away our connection to the plants. And those synthetic molecules are very toxic and poisonous, and people end up committing suicide on them a lot, which is why most of the veterans have been committing suicide. So, but I, I do believe that if marijuana had not been persecuted for 2,000 years, if we had had it, most of our songs would have been about marijuana because that's how important the plant is to creativity. And creativity is the key to spirituality. It's not the guy with the big book and the big hat on top of the stage. It's the Bob Marley. It's the John Lennon. It's, it's the creative, it's the, you know, Bob Dylan. When people are moved to create at that intense level, that is spirituality, people, that's going through them. So, anyway, I, 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 I like to write songs that kind of evoke our history. But they're the real way they would have been if we hadn't had Cannabis Illegal for 2,000 years. Everybody's token a brand new strain now. Come on, baby, smoke some marijuana. Come on, baby, smoke some marijuana. You're supposed to help me out, people. Come on, baby, smoke some marijuana. Come on, baby, smoke some marijuana. You gotta fill your lungs now. Toke up, toke up. Well, I think you got the neck.